Hello again, I am back once again with probably my sixth video or something today. Or my twelfth, considering the videos that got horribly delayed. But today I'm going to be covering quantum stockpiles and farms as I mentioned in my last video. Two things that are very important. One thing to know about quantum stockpiles is though, they are essentially exploiting the game. But quite frankly, I think... Uh, the way that stones are implemented in the game is quite stupid. There's quite a lot of kind of unjustifiable exploits, which just basically cheat the game, such as, uh, as danger rooms, uh, what else is there? Traps, I feel, kind of, well, they don't exploit the game, but they're very imbalanced and they make the game too easy, in my opinion. But I will be covering though, in fact. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I really need to get onto. I do have a mechanic, but I'll be covering that. I need to write that down on my amazing notepad. Oh my God, I, would, I nearly forgot about my stocks again, okay cover mechanics no cover traps okay there we go that's all it's now i know that and i need to cover stocks uh, i think i'll do that before i do anything else so stocks is a new menu well no it's not stocks it's called status in fact so z as you can see here is our status menu so i'm gonna go ahead and press z and uh, this details the amount of dwarves that i have the food that i have all that kind of stuff as you can see, it does have question marks next to it though. I did mention before how a bookkeeper, I think about two, three videos ago, uh, a bookkeeper does keep exact uh, traces of stocks. Because currently, it's kind of not very sure. You know, we don't really know how much uh, fish or plants we have. Nobody's taken any, any uh, notice of it. Nobody's keeping track of it, uh, which is why it's an unknown figure. The same for drinks. We do have 50 though. Uh, it's very important to check back here, make sure you've got enough food, meat, blah blah all that stuff uh, to keep your dwarves alive and happy uh, otherwise they'll die and start to starve uh, I probably won't have a starving dwarf to demonstrate uh, how a starving dwarf looks like during this playthrough but a starving dwarf will have a a brown a, a downward brown icon flashing on them for hunger and a downward blue icon for thirst and it's pretty obvious but you're very you need to be very attentive of this if you you know if you run out of water you could very well die uh, pretty easily like i said lots of horses die of it you know it's very hard to recover from if you've got say 40 dwarves all thirsty you can't just suddenly distill a bunch of uh, a bunch of plants and, ma and make yourself some alcohol instantly it's not how it works <clears throat> So as well as this main menu, we do have other sub-menus. We have our animals menu. Uh, here it lists the creatures, and as well as that, it has the name of them. So, owner. This is because animals can become pets. As you can see, currently these are toggled as unavailable. I can make it so they can be adopted. At the minute, they can't be, and the cat is not interested. Nobody cares about the cat. Nobody cares about pets. I, th I think it, it does. It's another kind of relationship that dwarf can have. It'll make them happy. You know, if you have a pet a cat, like you can come home to every day, and uh, and snuggle in with you or whatever dwarves do. I don't know. Eat with their cats, that kind of thing. Uh, it makes them happy, it gives them warm feelings inside, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but as well as that, you can also butcher animals, kill them, kill them all. Uh, but that's something that requires butchery and a butcher and a butcher workshop. Yeah. <clears throat> So, so we have a kitchen. I have no idea what this menu does. So I've never used it. Uh, <laughs> you can probably look on on the uh, the uh, the magma wiki or or the Dwarf Forest Reddit, or B12, or V, whatever you want. Okay, uh, this is another menu which you have not used. Again, you can check out on uh, any of those sources, like I said. Uh, stocks, again, is another menu in which it doesn't have any details, but as you can see, uh, if you do have a bookkeeper, all these will be properly numbered. It won't be indecisive. It won't be 50 question mark. I don't really know how much we've got. It'll be yes, 47. Uh, so as you can see, it does have the different items that we have as well, which is all hunky dory in Earth Shard. So what else do I want to cover? I don't think I've covered you yet. I'm gonna go ahead and check what my notepad said. Okay, stocks is covered. Okay, we can delete that. Traps. Traps I'm gonna go on to very shortly. Uh, but before I do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and cover a menu called units. And the hotkey for that is U. Uh, in here, it lists all the different units that we have. It has our dwarves, it has any nasty animals. Uh, if I saw any animals inside of a cavern, such as a crundle, a troglodyte, 
blind cave troll, cave spider, loads of loads of stuff. You know, like I said, there's just so much. It's just ugh, ugh, ugh. I could mention, I could talk about it all day. Uh, view creature. I'm gonna go ahead over the functions in this menu. View creature allows you to look at the creature. You know, I could do this to look at the thoughts and preferences of a dwarf, but I don't want to. You can also zoom on a creature. I can see where a creature is. I can see that my woodworker is right there. Oops. I can also zoom blood. I honestly have no idea what that is. Uh, manager. It requires a manager to work with. Uh, you know, the manager noble. One thing I don't actually have mentioned it, have I? I don't know. But nobles require big. Big nice rooms with uh, certain things. They also have mandates put out, uh, so it's it's something you don't want to really worry about uh, straight away. But before your first uh, caravan comes, it's very important to prepare a, uh, a noble. So you know, sheriff is something kind of unimportant. They deal with the law in the Z menu. The uh, status menu. You'll have a new part called justice, in which you know, say for example, a dwarf uh, has a tantrum. You'll flip a table, maybe punch somebody, he'll be arrested, or you could be killed, depending on how he, how bad uh, his law breaking is. If he if he killed a child or something, you know, he would undoubtedly be beaten to death by the by the hammer dwarf. That's just how dwarf and justice goes. Uh, but yeah, like I said, that's not something you worry about a whole lot. Manager is something. It adds quite a lot of new functions by having one. So in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and hmm, who's Meng? Let's go check. So Meng at the minute is my Brewer slash Grower. So I'm going to wait until I have a new Dwarf to uh, give myself any bookkeepers or anything. Because at the minute I'm kind of uh, short on hands. My Dwarves are still kind of unhappy. Oops. Uh, as you can see though, my Miners are starting to get more advanced. They've gone up 6, that one's gone up 6, that one's gone up only 5 sadly. But at the minute it's all good and oh my god, why are my Dwarves not mining that farm? <laughs> okay. I'm going to go over... A few traps right now to make traps uh, actually yeah I will I will be able to make them at the minute because you need I mean, you need a mechanic to build mechanics all the mechanics are quite easily made I'm gonna quickly cover them mechanics are made in a mechanic workshop with a and then T add new item and then T for mechanism yeah it makes no sense uh, but with a mechanism, you can make something, you know, you can make a lever, you can make a cage trap, all this kind of stuff. You also need a cage for a cage trap, mind you. But cages are quite easily made. I'm not quite sure how you make them. I think only a carpenter can make them, maybe. Uh, but yeah, cages are quite easily made, and they're probably the most overpowered, horrible thing that I've ever had uh, the, the pleasure of coming across in Dwarf Forest. I used to use them a lot, but I feel that they're kind of... Uh, they make the game too easy for me for my likes you know uh one thing that i find kind of unfair is how you can just you can just lie in a corridor with traps and only things that are immune to traps will not fall into it you know even a dragon can go into a trap kind of stupid totally acknowledges it as well it will be getting changed in time but at the minute uh there's not a huge lot of code in it you know it's basically if the if the monster of it is is not immune to traps he will fall into it if he is he will it doesn't take size or anything into account. But yeah, to build a trap, you want to go to B, capital T for trap. And then we have lots of different types. We have the stonefall trap, which is basically a very weak, very primitive kind of trap. It basically makes stones fall from the roof. It does a little bit of damage, but it's, again, like I said, very primitive, very easy to make. Uh, but yeah, I could make some if I had me mechanisms. Uh, weapon trap weapon trap is a trap in which you can put many different weapons in you know i could put some some steel steel spikes in there uh and i could have them facing up here and then i could have it on a on a repeating lever and those would be pulled and anything that crosses here would get uh you know just destroyed by these uh all these different uh all these different weapons a uh, lever like i said it's a lever pretty self-explanatory Pressure plate is, say for example, I could have a dwarf, a, 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 well actually you can make pressure plates, you can make them only be triggered by a large amount of weight or only triggered by enemies or only triggered by dwarfs. But say for example, I could have a, a pressure trap that goes here. This wouldn't work very well by the way, this is an awful example, but it is an example. You know, you can do whatever you want. With them. But I can have a pressure plate here that only reacts to very light animals like I don't know, a crundle or a troglodyte. Uh, a troglodyte could uh, walk over these traps and then water could come fluttering through and then it would flood them all out. That's an awful idea and it wouldn't work in uh, 
in that actual uh, real world of Dwarf Fortress. Um, but it is an idea. Cage trap, like I said, you know how those work. Upright spear slash spike, very unlike a weapon trap, except a weapon trap, you can put any weapon in. Upright spear slash spike, you can only put spears and spikes in, so they kind of impale, whereas weapon traps can bludgeon, I believe. And oh my god, I don't know why, why my dwarves, they just do not want to mine. Oh my god, they're finally mining my farm. Okay, I think down here is finally finished. We have lots of fungus growing and we have quite a bit of stone as well. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, that's what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my last upward staircase. And it's finally finished, and it's beautiful. <clears throat> so there we go, our food stockpile is finally being dug out. I can put down some workshops. One thing I'm hoping to expect fairly soon is a migration wave. Uh, I may actually have to cut the vi uh, continue and then cut the video when a migration wave comes because uh, at the minute there's, there's not a whole lot going for the forest. A migration wave is something that will come every single every single season without fail for the first few seasons. Uh, the size of them will depend on the wealth of your forest. The first few waves will be like uh, it could be anywhere anywhere from one to ten dwarves. It could it can be a random animal. They bring random stuff, you know, they have random jobs, which obviously you can change them. You know, like I said, you don't need to be skilled to something to make a, to have a job, to uh, be able to do your job. You know, I could have somebody like a metalsmith and I could make him my butcher and tanner dedicated. It doesn't have to be like that. I could modify it quite nicely like that. Uh, but yeah. Looks like our farm's finally been built out here. Uh, but yeah, migration wave. Uh, I, like I said, I may need to skip into it because not a whole lot's going on at the minute. I could get a lot of fun from striking into the earth and getting nasties to come and kill me, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up here and make the farm. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to cover farms. Uh, but yeah, with to make a farm, you press B, P for plot. And then with uh, use U, M, K, and H to build your farm. So I'm going to go ahead and make it here. In fact, I'm also going to make a little wall here. So yeah, our farm is going to go there straight away. I'm going to quickly, quickly go over farms because I'm going to run out of time. As you can see, he's currently building it. Construction initiated. It shouldn't take very long at all. I can also set that as a food stock pelt, but I'm going to do that in the next part. In fact, I'm not going to skip, skip to migration. Uh, I'm going to try and do as few skips as I possibly can. If nothing else, I'm going to try and, uh, try and uh, talk about as much as I possibly can. Get as much detail as I possibly can. Uh, but yeah, farms. The menu is a bit complicated. But basically, all you need to do is uh, you have A, B, C, D for each season. You do not need to worry about fallow, fertilize, seize fit. I don't even know what the hell they do. But I think they might make it yield more if you fertilize it and stuff. Again, you can check on the Magma Wiki if you feel the need to. But this is kind of the essentials, kind of uh, just skimming over. So we we'll have spring, summer, autumn, winter. So you can change what you make each season, but really there's not a whole lot of point. Plump helmets, why I got them, they work all year round, as I've said. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them all year round. One thing to be noted is the fact that you can't make a farm on the surface and build the same the same kind of stuff. Uh, they have different, uh, different kind of stuff that you produce on the surface because you know, it gets sunlight, this is underground. As you can see, we've got a plant. Uh, our first plant there. Oh my god, and it's now summer. So we're gonna actually get a migration wave very, very soon. Uh, our forest is very, going very, very nicely at the minute, I would say. Uh, I'm gonna make a nice food stockpile there, and I'm gonna continue on with my forest. I'll be getting a migration wave so, so soon, and I'll be able to do a lot more stuff then. I'll be able to also kit out my uh, my bedrooms a little bit nicer. I need to add a few as well, actually. So anyways, this is the video you learned about did you learn about quantum stockpiles? No, you didn't. God damn, how did I forget about that? Uh, but you learn about a lot of stuff. You learn about stocks. You learn about unit menus. You learn about farms. In the next video, you will be learning about quantum stockpiles for one. You'll be learning about migration moves in a bit more detail. How to use dwarf therapist in a little more detail. And possibly anything else that comes along. Thank you very much for watching. Comment, subscribe, like, dislike. That kind of thing. Uh, in fact, one thing I'm going to quickly show you before I leave is how to save a game. Because I'm actually finishing now for the day. Uh, you press escape and then you go to save game. Yeah, self-explanatory, isn't it? And then this will bring us back to the main menu. And oh my god, I only have 18 seconds left. There we go. And I'll do all that and then you can quit the game. And that's gone off as well. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to have to cut right now. Please tune in again and I'll probably be releasing in some more videos in the next few days.